Filipino food isn't necessarily known to be spicy, but today I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious spicy beef, kind of like stir fry slash curry uh, that comes from the South that you're absolutely going to love. If you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I love going to Mindanao. It's just the biggest southern island of the Philippines that in itself has even more islands to explore. Uh, we went to Tawi Tawi. We've driven the whole east coast of Mindanao, which was absolutely fantastic. And I think that region isn't talked about enough when we talk about Filipino food, uh, but they have such a rich, diverse culture than what you'll find in the north of the Philippines or even in the center of the Philippines. And you don't see a lot of those dishes kind of migrating up north. Um, and that's a pity because the flavors that come out um, of these dishes are absolutely amazing. I think it was an account, I think it was Food Insider or Business Insider that posted a video about um, an ice cream shop in London that was making a burnt coconut ice cream. And in their caption, they said something like, um, this ice cream is made with a typical Filipino flavor of burnt ice cream. And then the comment section was absolutely enraged with Filipinos saying, burnt coconut isn't a Filipino flavor. I'm Filipino, I've never heard of burnt coconut, etc., etc." Burnt coconut is one of those ingredients that is actually really used quite a bit in Tao Su cuisine, all the way down south, even um, around the areas of Sulu, Tawi Tawi, all the, the in Maguindanao, you'll find it even. Um, and so it is a very Filipino flavor, but unfortunately it's not a popular one that's known to people in the north or in Metro Manila and things like that. And so when I saw that, it actually made me really sad. Um, so we really need to do better in terms of getting to know our food. One of the other key ingredients used in that region is uh, palapa. It's, it kind of reminds me of an Indonesian sambal, which makes sense because we're, if you look at the map geographically, we're really not too far from Indonesia and Malaysia. Um, and at the same time, it's used both as a condiment, something you'll put on rice, or it's used uh, as something that you would start cooking with. Um, palapa is usually made with sakura, which is, it's, it's kind of like a scallion, but it's really endemic to a certain region in the Philippines, and it's very hard to find sakura outside of that region. Um, I've made two videos before where we actually see sakura. Uh, so we'll put some clips on there for you so you know exactly what it looks like. Um, so it's a mix of sakura, um, chilies, and ginger. Those are kind of like your base ingredients. And then sometimes you'll see people who will add some salt, some sugar, um, some turmeric I've seen added in there, or even some MSG. I've actually seen some people add magic syrup uh, to their palapa. Um, everything's chopped, grinded, pounded, and then it's cooked very gently and slowly with some oil until it dries out, and then you add more oil. Hence the, the similarity to a sambal. So we're gonna start by making that today, and that's really gonna be our basis for the beef dish later. Since I don't have access to sakura, I'm gonna be using some spring onions and some chives to approximate the taste. You can do this in a mortar and pestle, but I'm just gonna do it in a food processor. Add your chives and the white parts and some of the greens from your spring onions. Blitz that together. To this, I'm gonna add about eight cloves of garlic and two thumb-sized pieces of ginger. Remove this paste and add about 10 bird's eye chilies. This will give you a good kick, so reduce this number if you're unsure about the heat. You'll notice with this recipe, it's a lot of about this and a little bit of that because it really does come down to personal taste in terms of how garlicky you want something or how spicy you want this paste to be. Start with a dry pan, no oil, on medium heat. Add the spring onion mix first and gently cook this down while continuously stirring for about five minutes. You want this to kind of release some of its liquid and become nice and soft. Once there, you can add your oil. I'm using some peanut oil here. I'm gonna start with about half a cup. We don't want this to be drowning in oil, but we want it to have a nice ratio of solids versus oils. Cook this down again while stirring for about 10 minutes before adding your chilies. Now at this point, it really comes down to personal preference once again. You can either serve this as is, wet and jammy, this consistency is very common, or if you're like me, you wanna get this nice and crispy and slightly brown, you can do that as well. When I have it where I want it, I'll season it with some salt and a little bit of sugar right at the end. You can also do this with some spices like turmeric powder.
I'm gonna use some turmeric powder in the stew with some coconut milk, some good quality beef. I'm using some strip loin here, so please note that if you're using a non-prime cut or a non-quick cooking beef, you will have to adjust the cook time and timing of the ingredients to get it nice and soft. One brown onion, some chives, a sweet potato, four cloves of garlic, two tomatoes, a carrot, and our freshly made palapa. We're basically gonna be peeling and cubing everything up into even sized pieces. Then we're gonna mince your onions and your garlic and cut your tomatoes in eighths. Heat up some peanut oil in a pan, fry off your strip loin cubes until they've released their fats and have a nice sear on them. In that same pan, in goes the tomatoes, garlic, and onions. Cook this down for about five minutes before toasting some turmeric powder in the middle for a couple of minutes before adding back your beef. Mix it all together, add your coconut milk, mix, and then season with your palapa. Remember to taste to determine how much you need, and if you need some salt without the spiciness, go ahead and season with salt and don't add more palapa because obviously there are some chilies in the palapa. Lower the heat, bring to a slow simmer, and cook down for about 20 minutes until the oil starts separating just slightly from the coconut milk. Add your carrots and sweet potatoes, cover and simmer gently for about 10 minutes depending on how thick you've cut them or until they are just cooked. If this dries out a little bit, you can always thin things out with a little bit of broth or some coconut cream. Give this a good mix. So you can add more palapa if you want this to be spicier, but I think I got the spice level to where I want it to be. Let's give it a taste. Try just the sauce for now. Mmm. So much flavor. Woo! And a nice spice kick too. Mmm. Such a simple dish in terms of how the ingredients come together. There are a few steps to do, but it is so worth it. This is like flavor bomb. More people should make this kind of food at home. And once you try it, you'll be like, oh my God, this is so good. Like it reminds me of Thai or Malaysian or Indonesian um, cooking and curries in terms of the spices and aromatics that are in there. And it just makes everything so much more interesting. Now, this is in no way the traditional way of making sinina, it's just the way I like to do it, um, and I think it works really well. Uh, for the palapa, for example, as well, you can cook it down to how I did it, which is more closer to an Indonesian sambal in terms of getting the ingredients in there crunchy, uh, but once things turn brown, you can stop it if you want, you can keep it nice and um, soft, but I like mine crunchy. Wait, I'm gonna try just a little bit more of this on the curry. I have a feeling this is gonna be really spicy. <coughs> Most, if not all, of the flavor of this dish really can give thanks to this. That complements absolutely everything that's in here. I really urge you to try this out and then please tag me in your pictures. It'll make me really happy to see you guys eating this kind of food.